My name is Ahmed, and welcome to Dustin Tribe. Since 2012, the original Muslim adventure community. This is our podcast, a production of the Outlander Media Cooperative. We share reflections here, and we sometimes tell stories, and we invite you to learn more at www.dustandtribe.com. There are trails we take to nowhere in particular. And there are trails that we take to discover. There are trails we take to recover. And there are trails we take to find ourselves. And there are trails taken out of habits or nostalgia or out of ambition or even because of heartbreak. Sometimes we have a destination and sometimes we wander, but the mechanics are the same. One foot and then the other. You know, we're engineered for movement. Stagnation, it can be spiritual, emotional, intellectual, or developmental, but no matter. A long walk will help in every case. And if we cannot walk, then we move what we can, and the fog will lift, God willing. And sometimes we take to the trail with a friend, and other times we would rather be alone. And in either case, we have the opportunity to listen. I don't know if this is true for everybody, but the things I hear on the trail stay with me for a long time. Maybe not the words so much, but everything behind the words. I remember two brothers tearfully confessing their admiration for one another. They have since lost their father, and their mother is not long for the world. May God have mercy on their souls. And these brothers will grieve, but I'm not worried for them, because they have each other. I'm confident of this, because well, that's what I heard them say to each other on the trail. I remember a married couple celebrating an anniversary on the trail. A poem was recited between the two of them. There was more tears there also. I remember throwing rocks with other men as we hiked under an overcast desert sky, I can't remember what we were looking for out there, but we discovered how much we liked to play, and we talked about how important that is, and we've been playing together ever since. I remember singing songs with friends on the trail and listening to my wife recite prayers as we scrambled through rocky darkness, and I remember hearing the labored breathing of companions as we climbed and even the dry heaves of the particularly unprepared. I remember once camping with a man who woke up to say that his back hurt after sleeping on the ground and that he wanted to go home. And I remember another man who forgot his allergy medicine and he was absolutely miserable with sneezing and congestion, but he did not want to go home. I remember still another man who was fearful he might actually die after his body locked up and he, he felt he couldn't move anymore. We gave him some candy to address his hypoglycemia, and he thought that was magic. And I remember a man deeply saddened by his inability to keep up with his companions on the trail. He was mad at himself, disappointed in his decisions to not take better care of himself. More frustrating was the possibility that he might be holding others back, and I watched his sadness turn to awe and exhilaration as others decided to slow down and keep pace with him. At camp, he would get up early to heat water for his friends in what I would call a sort of balancing act of gratitude, and that remains one of my favorite memories from the trail. And I remember hiking with a Muslim woman who was deeply in love with a Christian man. And she knew it was religiously wrong to take things further, but she had never been treated with the gentle acceptance that he offered her. She did not feel that she deserved him, and there was no room in her imagination for anything better. I find myself angry with her father, though I never knew him, and I don't suppose she did either, at least no part of him that mattered. And I remember talking with an amateur linguist on the trail who shared that the letter L 
is theorized to be a pictogram of the human tongue. And this is why words like l language and l lollipop and l lick, they all begin with L because these are words that describe some action of or some relationship to the tongue. And this example actually holds true across multiple language families. It's not just these conversations that stick with me. The sound of thunder echoing through the granite walls of Kings Canyon is not a sound I will ever forget. And the reverberant thump and splash of rocks tumbling along the lower banks of the Smith River had me and my brother imagining enormous steelhead launching their way upstream. The rustle of birds in the leaf litter, that always sounds more sinister than it should, especially when you're hiking alone. And the yipping of coyotes in the dark distance is something of a desert lullaby, yeah, but they, they need to be far, far away. These days, I mostly walk with our goats and our dog, and the goats like to browse and munch as they go, and there isn't a lot of forward progress. That's mostly frustrating for our dog, who tugs at his leash wanting to sniff and paw and pee on all of the new and interesting things on the trail, but as he gets older, he's more open to sitting with me until the goats have had their fill and they're ready to move on, or a shambling, crunching, gambling lots. And there's more conversation than you might imagine, because goats like to sound off as they eat. It's kind of like a game of Marco Polo, a little call and response to make sure that the herd hasn't run off without them. And I'm a part of that. If I've decided to take the dog around a corner where the goats can't see me, I'll call out. And they'll call back, and we'll just keep doing that until they find me. Our dog, A.D., he's... A particularly good listener. It's his superpower. I can pretty much tell him anything, and I get those big, brown, empathic eyes responding with everything I need to know. There are trails forked and meandering that are meant to be explored, and others that are groomed to get you to exactly one place. And there are trails that have been lost over time. They lead to places that nobody wants to go anymore. That wasn't always the case, but things change. Intimacy with a trail, that's possible and encouraged. We need not be excessively preoccupied with the fresh and the novel all the time. We can take the same trail at different times, perhaps in the morning or in the evening, or maybe go out after the rain or once the sun has set. Walk the trail through all of the seasons. Here in the Sierra foothills, we have two trails just outside the Camp One homestead. One follows a creek before opening up on a beautiful little meadow, and the other climbs to a lovely pond all overgrown with duckweed. And we walk them frequently, but it's truly wondrous how different the experience can be depending on pace or company, the time of day, the day of the week. Our experience as creation is dynamic and contextual. And this is why movement becomes us, because we are ever-changing, in constant flux, moving perhaps from ignorance to knowledge to forgetfulness, from forgetfulness to heedlessness, and then repentance, forgiveness, humility, and hopefully to gratitude. That's one path. But another path might take us to bitter selfishness. A lot of it depends on the time of day and the company we keep. Regardless, if we are alive at the end of whatever trip we happen to be on, we should be quick to take another because a day may come when we no longer believe the trail holds any promise. We might fall into the trap of believing that we have seen it all, or worse, that whatever remains to be seen is not worth seeking out. And in these moments, we are helped by a recollection of the very nature of the trail. Erosion, weather, lights, the falling of trees and the splitting of rocks. Nothing is ever the same on the trail. And nothing is ever the same with you or me. We cannot give up on the trail. Because truth be told, brothers and sisters, we are the trail. 
You can read a transcript of this recording, get on our mailing list, and learn about upcoming events at our website, www.dustandtribe.com. My name is Ahmed, and this is the Dust and Tribe Podcast.